There's really no other way to say this. <laughs> I was wrong. Joe was wrong. It's Tommy time. I'm Sean. This is the Cuse Militia Podcast. Is that an orange in your pants or are you just happy Q's won? Make some noise, orange fans. It's time for the Q's Militia Podcast with Sean and Joe. Give us a like on Facebook at Q's Militia Podcast and follow on Twitter at Q's Militia. The right of the people to keep and wear orange shall not be infringed. All right, what's up, Cuse Nation? Thanks for tuning in to the Cuse Militia Podcast with Sean and Joe. If you like it, as always, please share it. Make sure you subscribe to whatever platform you listen on. So this episode, we're going to give you our thoughts on the UNC game. You know, ugly wins are still wins, albeit an ugly win. We'll go over all that, that roller coaster game that was UNC. And we will give you our uh, pregame for NC State early this week. But before we get into any of that stuff, uh, you know the deal, okay? We got to hear from the friends over at MyBookie. Uh, basically, simply put, if you're betting online and whoever you're betting with is not doubling doubling your uh, deposit dollar for dollar, you might as well just head over to MyBookie. They've been in business for years. They have great online reviews, and their mobile site is easy to use. I would only recommend a service to my listeners that's been good to me. That's why I'm urging you to make your way to MyBookie. You win, they pay. They have in-game live betting over-unders on fancy points scored and the most rewarding player perks in the business currently slammed with betters right now and they want to give everybody the best possible service. So what they're going to do is if you deposit after 7 p.m. Eastern, they're going to give you an additional $25 free play on deposits over 100 bucks. You deposit 100 bucks, you get 125 house money to get that um, offer activated. Use promo code QS25 if you're going to deposit within regular business hours. You can still get your deposit matched dollar for dollar up to $1,000 by using promo code QS. So visit my bookie online today. That's M-Y-B-O-O-K-I-E. And don't forget to use one of those promo codes when creating your account. Uh, you play, you win, you get paid. My bookie. Thank you, my bookie. All right. Okay. <clears throat> so, all right, quickly, if you did not listen to the interview I did with Dr. Donald Staffo, uh, it is episode 88, it's the one right before this. Uh, we did it Friday. If you did not listen to that episode yet, it is great. He has written a great new book called Jim Beheim and Syracuse Basketball in the Zone, and I got about a half-hour interview with him. It, I thought it went great. He's a great guy, uh, so check it out. And if you email him at dstaffo, 64 at gmail.com. You can get a personalized signed copy from him. I think it's 32 bucks or something like that, but it's in the episode. You can listen to that. And here was a quick snippet. So I have to ask you, was Rodney Hood in position to take that charge? It depends. It <laughs> depends what, what, if you're what coach, coach of what team. If you ask uh, uh, Bayheim, he's going to say, you know, that call went against us. If you uh, ask your chef, he goes, you know, it was a great call. <laughs> right, absolutely, yeah. So we all, I think we all know uh, the deal with the uh, the C.J. Fair charge, uh, and we go into that a tiny bit and a couple other things. So check it out. I would, I would appreciate it. Um, <laughs> Is it me, or do Syracuse <laughs> games feel like they last like four and a half hours, by the way? Or do they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's a whole afternoon. I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. And, you know, is it is no, it a double, double overtime helps. But. Yeah, double overtime helps. And we're obviously the big story of the UNC game was uh, Dungey being pulled. And we're going to go over that. Um, we're going to save that sweet little nugget for the end, but there's a, there's just so much happened. Um, first thing I noticed almost immediately in that game, because I expected more out of Syracuse, Joe, you said you were nervous. You said that you thought this game was going to be close. And I'm like, God, oh, geez, here's paranoid Joe again, you know, giving me the hubbub about the, it's going to be a close game and making me all nervous. I'm like, no, dude, they're going to run. The, they're going to, they're going to run this on, on UNC. They're going to be able to score so many points. UNC won't be able to keep up. Well, uh, SU did not look like a team coming off of a bye week. No, they didn't look like they were as fresh as I expected. And, you know, 
I mean, <laughs> well, we know the rest of it, right? So, yeah. so uh, you know, Syracuse improved to 5-2 and two overall, 2-2 two and two in the a- ACC in front of 35,510 fans. Um, Eric Dungey was 7 70- yeah, allegedly, <laughs> at least at least in the beginning, and we'll touch on that in a little bit. But Eric Dungey was 17 for 23 for 225 yards, zero touchdowns, zero interceptions. He carried the ball 15 times for 42 yards and a touchdown. Starting quarterback Tommy DeVito was 11 for 19 for 181 yards, three touchdowns and one interception. Mo Neal averaged 8.3 yards a carry for a total of 66 yards. Chris Elmore ran a touchdown in. Jamal Custis led all receivers with 162 yards and seven catches and a touchdown. Nakeem Johnson followed with 102 yards and five receptions with a touchdown. Ravion Pierce back from injury. He got himself a game-winning touchdown. I think he totaled with six yards. Uh, UNC quarterback Nathan Elliott was 32 of 52, 34 of 52 for 321 yards and two touchdowns. Daz Newsom led all receivers for UNC with 90 yards and a touchdown. UNC only had 22 rushing yards at the half, but they did finish with 100. 79 yards on the ground led by Antonio Williams. He had 116 of those. Ryan Guthrie led the Syracuse defense with 12 tackles and it was Kendall Coleman with the only sack tallied for the Orange. Um, you know, the 22 yards uh, rushing at halftime, I, th- I I know that I think they had 160 yards passing at halftime and um, you know, I was still a little nervous about the passing because it was dink and dunk the whole game, and it was just seems like it just seems like we couldn't stop him. But the run was shut down. Yeah, yeah, there was def- that was one thing we were looking for, and obviously with everything that's been going on, uh, that was definitely a welcoming sign. Um, the first quarter started out really. Eh, I mean, the North Carolina, like you said, they dink and dunked, and they ran a little bit. They ran the clock down. I think we only had two possessions. It was a really really fast quarter. And, uh, I thought that that was kind of like you, what you were going to see for the rest of the day. And, you know, then we ended up going on a, what, 20 to nothing run. Well, technically 27 when we ended up, well, no, actually, no, it was 13, nothing. Then we ended up coming out, scored a touchdown coming right out of halftime. But you know what I'm talking about? We ended up getting the 20 to seven lead and, um, yeah, 20 on answer too, wasn't it? Yeah, it was 20 unanswered. Yeah. So, I mean, it looked, Going into the to the to the half, it looked like we started to to gain a little bit of momentum, and then we got the ball right out of half and went down and scored a touchdown. Dungey ran one in, and it started to look like it was going to go the way that we were thinking. And then it was just, I, I mean, for the rest of the third quarter and half of the fourth quarter, it was difficult to watch, Sean. I mean, then I can probably speak for a majority of the fans. I know a lot of fans that left. I mean, yeah. personal friends, personal friends, and people that left in the third quarter. Some waited till the fourth quarter. Uh, I thought that was crazy because uh, I mean we were winning, and then even when they came back and they took the lead, it was still only a touchdown game. So, and um, you know everybody well, else who when everybody who left, they they missed a great finish. They missed a great you know? finish, and 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 just um. It was a, it was amazing because they obviously left before Devito was put in. Devito came yeah. in with five minutes and seven seconds left. Okay, right. came in with five minutes seven seconds left, and he got to play two possessions from what the twenty five yard line um, in overtime. So yeah. he was eleven for nineteen, one hundred and eighty one yards and three touchdowns. So the difference, and I'm not harping on, and I know I took a couple shots saying he's a starting quarterback in the in the game overview and everything, but right. uh, but I think. And we'll we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. I'll save that. But, um, you know, that's a lot of the three touchdowns. I know we had the one interception, but three touchdowns in that amount of time for 181 yards. That's that's a feat, man. And those fans missed oh, all yeah. that. And exactly. and guess who else that's, noticed? That's an... Guess who else noticed the fans leaving? You retweeted uh, this today. The players. Yeah. Uh, you retweeted uh, from Jake Pickard. Uh, he said, he tweeted out, saw tons of fans leave with five minutes left in the game. To those who to, to those who stayed, thank you. We all we got, we all we need. So, yeah. I mean, the fans well, noticed that stuff. I mean, that's kind of ridiculous, in my opinion. Uh, just, I mean, to leave, I don't really, I don't get, I mean, a football game's a football game, and you hear it time and time again, it's hard to win a football game, and... It's a long game. It's a physical game, and a lot of things can happen really fast. And um, 
just to to be down just one touchdown, one possession, and to have fans leave, it just it was very very disheartening. Um, but at the the product in the field at that time too was very very hard to watch too. Yeah, so, it was stressful as hell. It was stressful. Oh, it was really bad. It I was mean, upsetting. the ups and downs, yeah, ups and downs and ebbs and flows of that game was was insane. Um, again, like you said, it was a very long game, and uh, <laughs> I mean, we can only be happy that we that we got the win, but obviously there's a lot of drama out of it. Um, we end up getting to five wins, get to five and two. So, I'm, I mean, it's, it's a great start. And, and, uh, and what a difference five and two is from four and three. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that that's huge. Well, especially if that would have been a loss to a team like that. A lot of people look at North Carolina and Pittsburgh as not the best teams in the ACC and to lose to those teams. I, I mean, there's going to be a lot of fans that just downplay it. So to make sure that we got that that win and however we got it, um, you know, that's <laughs> – I, I don't really care. It, it was an awesome game, and we're 5-2, and two, and that's really all that matters. Uh, at the end of that game, it, it breathed a lot of life back into the program. Uh, you saw a lot of uh, energized players and energized defense. The defense stepped up real, real big when, you know, there was – you know, North Carolina, they seemed to have – figured it out a little bit, especially with the running game. So um, we did what we had to do. Uh, now, they did they did catch some big plays on us. Uh, the Newsom guy, he was a problem. That punt return, um, getting that uh, yeah. that, fum- getting that fumble, and then not being able to capitalize and having Mo Neal turn around and lose a fumble right after that. I mean, there's a lot of things, you know, that kind of hurt us to where I thought we might have been able to win it in regulation. But That, that was Strickland um, down at, like, the five-yard line, wasn't it? He hit the ball with his knee. <laughs> No, Moniel. Was it Moniel? Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, he hit the ball with his knee, and it was, that was kind of a freak thing because he wasn't going to be fumbling. That. He was trying to stretch and kind of tr- keep yeah. his knees off the ground. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and there just, was uh, – and we got lucky too. Uh, we didn't get in uh, field goal lucky against Pittsburgh, but I think we got field goal lucky in this game. There was that one field goal there at the end there uh, before DeVito came in where it would have put him up 10, and that would have been a little, uh, little tough to come back from. Yeah, but um, we still would have been in position if you really would have looked at it, though, because Devito came out and he hit that fifth, like that long uh, pass yards. to Custis. Yeah, but we didn't we didn't score in that drive. So if we were down ten, we would have kicked the field goal, kicked it off, still would have been in the same position. So you never really know. But either way, that was I mean a huge miss for them, and um, uh, we we really weren't on our game as far as penalties goes. We had more penalties than them. I think that there should have been a little bit more thrown, but. Um, oh yeah, I think the officiating sucked for, kind of on the oh. both sides of the ball, but I saw numerous at least holding calls or uh you know, pass interference calls. Dude, it was it was in the first quarter and I saw Kendall Coleman's uh jersey was ripped. And it's like <laughs> how does that happen? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Not because he well, got held. No. Right. Uh, uh, well, but yeah. So, I mean, but you could argue about that every, you know, it's just it comes down to the timely ones. But, yeah, I mean, there were some big plays. It was the first real, like, um, you know, bad situation that um, that our, our special teams is. And we've been a little spoiled with our special teams. You know, I think uh, Schmidt missing that 44 yarder as bad yeah. as he did in the beginning. And um, then that uh, punt return which we've been really, really good on, on returns that, against that, returns and stuff like that. So um, there were some things where we kind of had a couple of breakdowns, but overall, like I said, I mean, for that to end the way that it happened is uh, like improbable, almost like a story. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, no kidding. That Des Newsome too. He's a local star here and um, he's from Hampton, which is about – a half hour from Virginia Beach, and he was he was huge. I think he had offers from Clemson too, and he, he really? went. To, yeah, I think he went to ended up going to UNC. But he's their best player. Well, they have to. I mean, they have a lot of good players. Uh, I mean, they're only a couple of years removed from being in the ACC championship game. Um, you know, a couple two years ago they had Mitch Trubisky. The year before that they had Marquise Williams, and they were playing in the ACC championship. So um, they still have pieces, and Fedora has, for all intents and purposes. Um, recruited pretty well for what North Carolina was before he got there. So um, they might not have a great record, but they have a lot of close wins, and they do yeah. kind of they, they kind of shot themselves or sorry a lot of close, close losses, losses right? Close losses. Um, they have shot themselves in the foot a lot, but uh, that's by no means necessary. A 
a bad team. Right. Do you think they shot themselves in the in the foot against Syracuse, or do you think Syracuse held on no, to a game think, they should have won think anyway? There was. I think that they. To me, the only thing that I and this is just, I mean, uh, and you can call it reaching all you want, but it looked like North Carolina had a game plan. They had certain plays that they ran when they knew we were in zone coverage. They had other plays that they used against man. And, and if you could tell and notice, it was really, really vanilla. Uh, Elliot wasn't really throwing the ball down the field that much. It was a lot of just, like you said, nickel and dime, and then the running the ball. And um, it's really hard to be that efficient every single play all the time, that many plays without getting a lot of yardage. So eventually that catches up to you. Uh, I think it took a couple big plays by Newsom, uh, that punt return and, you know, that little reverse pitch pass, whatever the hell that is. Um, I think it took a couple big it's plays like, a, like that. Almost like a shovel pass. <clears throat> well, yeah, that and, the, and a great effort by their defense to kind of, neutralized Dungy and I think, what his what his strengths are. Um, I think he's been figured out a little bit. I mean, I think everybody can put together a defensive game plan for well, Dungy. I mean, it sure seemed like it, but, um, but yeah, I don't think necessarily that they shot themselves in the foot. The only thing that I would say that I noticed was once DeVito came in and we were actually uh, kind of moving the ball a lot, I just... The I mean, energy you notice, went up. Did, the, but yeah, well, the energy it went up. But did you did you notice like all the the drives and all the possessions before like North Carolina was it was like almost methodic. We're gonna you know get the first downs, run the time down, sure, and yeah. everything like that, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, um, even after when when Devito got in there and it was five minutes ago when we got down there, but we didn't score. Uh, I mean, if you remember, that was five minutes, and then we didn't score, and then. They stopped us on fourth down. They got the ball. Then they stopped. Then then we stopped them, right? Right. And then we got the ball. And then, <clears throat> excuse me. And then we th- we threw an inter or no. Then we went down and we scored really quick and tied the game. And then we kicked it off to them. And then we stopped them again. We got the ball back again. And that's when then the we, interception. Then came. we threw an interception. Uh-huh. And then they still had a couple plays. Like all that happened in five minutes. Uh-huh. And there was like five, six possessions in five minutes. And it just seemed to me like the play calling and and um, and North Carolina's offensive their their game plan kind of went on the wayside. The amount of times that they threw when they could have forced us into using a timeout or could have ran the clock down, uh, clock management stuff like that. I mean, I don't know if it would have made a difference, but. Um, it was just odd, and it was it was a it was going against everything they that they were calling the whole you know beginning of the game. But um, like I said, that's kind of my only real thing that I would say. And that and a couple missed field goals. Other than that, I don't think they shot themselves in the foot. I think that they played actually really really well. Um, all right, look, I'm gonna hit uh, uh, one more negative thing. I think on my list. Um, just looking to make sure it's the only thing left. Um, the play calling. There was one. There was one specific time in uh, the third quarter, I think it was. Or no, it was the second quarter. It was third and eight, and they were in the red zone. I think they're at the ten yard line, and Dungy rushed for a loss of two on second down, and then on third down, they ran him up the middle. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know if you if you saw some of the um, some of um, Babers kind of reactions in his facial I mean body body language tells a lot and there's a couple times if you paid attention where Babers is not happy with his coaches on the sideline I don't know if it was play call I don't know if it was some of the players and stuff but after that play they showed him and he was definitely like what the hell is disgust- that yeah yeah and I don't know if it was Dungy if Dungy decided to do it or if the coach you know I, I don't know I can't really say obviously we weren't there you know to be a fly on the wall but um there's a couple times when you really when you saw it, um, when there were certain play calls like that and certain stuff that was going on, uh, you could tell on the sideline when the when the cameras did capture it that Dino Babers was was not happy two, with somebody, yeah. whether it was players or coaches. He was not a happy camper. They had so. two wide re- wide uh, receiver screens in a row that were blown up. I mean, it was all this short little like. There was nothing exciting. It was very vanilla. I think we've talked. I, I, I think well, we've yeah. talked about that and before. I, and I talked to you about it at halftime, and I was talking about it near the end of the game too. That I don't think Dungy attempted a pass in the middle of the field whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, was no, somebody we talked like, about was somebody like you know with Ravion Pierce and you know some other guys, uh, running backs and stuff like that. There's no 
inside middle screens. There's no trying to get the ball, you know, over top the linebackers, which is, you know, a spot that usually gets open when you try to hit so many players on the deep ball. I mean, how many times did he try to hit people on the deep ball on the sidelines? Uh, that's going to spread those safeties out. So usually that opens up stuff like over top the linebackers in the middle of the field. And I don't think I saw Dungey throw one there. So yeah, um, he, he doesn't throw in the middle of the field. No, and that's just that's really he, he's the whole too thing. unedged. He's too unedged to run sometimes. Um, all right, here's the other thing, and that's what that's what a lot of fans don't like. And we're going to get into that in one second. But after this, no. uh, Melifonwu he broke up four passes coming in for Frederick down the stretch. One of them was on the last possession of UNC, which yeah. and, and he had four tackles, one for a loss. Came up and blew up a wide receiver screen too. Yeah, how awesome is that? He did yeah. excellent. I was wicked happy about that. Um, and then the other thing is, uh, is there any doubt about Custis? I mean, he's the number one receiver. He's got to be. Uh, was was it you that was telling me you were talking to a buddy of yours? Wasn't he worried about Custis? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, my buddy that I work with, a uh, North Carolina fan. Honestly, it's uh, I don't want to say that I can't wait to talk to him tomorrow, but it's kind of going to be painful. I can't kind of can't wait to hear what he has to say, but um. I'm sure a lot of it's going to be about that quarterback situation. But, yeah, Custis did end up getting his his revenge, and a lot of it was when DeVito came in. Um, he did so, good under both, but, yeah. Well, he did good under both, but, I mean, he probably had 80 yards and a touchdown with DeVito, um, 90 yards, something like that. So, All right, so, well, let's get down to the nuts and bolts of it. I I, I couldn't help but want, like, you and I, we, we have had Dungy's back, and I always said that, you know, I wouldn't be pulling Dungy out until it was like des until it was like desperate. The game <laughs> against UNC with five minutes and seven seconds left was desperate. Really? Aaron, yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Well, you mean like a desperate like call? I think it to was like time to do him? it. I think it was time to pull the trigger and change it up. Dungy wasn't doing much. No, he wasn't. And to tell you the truth, all that does is kind of tell me that he was probably thinking the same thing against Pittsburgh. And that's my Anybody point. That's didn't my point. Pull the trigger. Right, exactly. And that's my point. This was my whole point. What if, what could have been against Pitt if, uh, you know, you'd have maybe put DeVito in? We'd have all this behind us, first of all, and had two weeks to stew on it. I'm sorry, but Dungy is not right. There's there's a couple there's a couple plays in that game against UNC where you saw the glimpses of the Dungy that we all love, okay? But when he's passing and sometimes when he's just in the pocket looking around, it's like I don't know, man. It's like missing something to me. It's, yeah, uh, he definitely. I mean, well, one thing that I could say is it seems like he's just only comfortable throwing certain types of balls. And right, yeah, that's um, a good point. Yeah. Obviously, like you said, he is kind of a run first quarterback. So when he's in there, there's the run pass option. He does like to, to run, and a lot of times, you know, uh, you kind of you kind of miss you miss guys. You know, he's not looking for the first read. He's looking to okay, well, he's, he's I'm going to look for something wide open, and if not, then I'm going to run like right. the big play. He's looking right. for the home. He doesn't run every go time. through his progressions. But the biggest thing to me with him has been his emotion. Like this past game, he was not, I mean, you watched Clemson, you've seen him in the past. Right. He's, uh, the whole game he's fired up and he did not look fired up. So right, I don't know if right. it's something, yeah. I don't know if it's something physical. I don't know if it's something in his personal life, some mental thing that's going, I, I don't know. I don't know if there's something. Is it the right the shoulder we keep bringing up from the first game? I right. Mean, right. I mean, who's, who knows, but I know that, I mean, like I said, DeVito, when he came in, the whole team looked energized, almost like they knew they had a chance to win. It's almost, almost like, they looked okay, like it was uh, about time. Yeah, like, it's, it's almost like they looked like they are coming off of a bye week <laughs> when DeVito came in. The, the, yeah. the energy level was different. Yeah, and you had a defense that gave up 150 yards of rushing in the second half that all of a sudden was stopping stopping them three and out. And you had yeah, it's uh, crazy receivers that were all, all of a sudden – getting open in the middle of the field and beating guys. And, you know, he's just dropping it right in the bucket, right where they are. Like it was, it was crazy to see. So, uh, I mean, you can always say, you know, the shoulda, coulda, wouldas. And I mean, again, we talked about it as far as having to eat crow and stuff. Um, but 
Yeah, we've been, we've been Dungy apologists. We, we definitely yeah, we have. have. And there's there's been a lot of people that have because, you know, he's he's been the only guy up until this year that's won a game for us at the quarterback position for the last three years. Yeah. So, I mean, what are we supposed to do? But uh, at the end of the I, day, I, I feel like but, I but feel it, like the it, secret the secret sauce is out. Like Right. Well, there's that, you know but it mean? goes back to what you said and yeah, I think you nailed it. And I'm and I'm I'm just going to give you credit because it goes back to the fire. And do you remember against Clemson when he's almost getting to a fight on the sideline? Was that Clemson? Yeah. I can't remember. It, it's those yeah, those Clemson, things. Florida State, yeah. Yeah, it's the things like that. When he gets up and he's pumped and he's freaking screaming inside his helmet. It's been him for three years. Yeah. What? Where is it? It's gone. It's yeah. not there, dude. And Which leads me to believe something's going on. Whether he's losing the team or the locker room or confidence. Well, I mean, shit. I mean, we can. He is not a weather. This past Saturday, he lost it. I mean, oh, he lost it was it. I gone. Mean, I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, it's, and he was doing the best that he could to be a good teammate and everything like that. But again, like you said, he declined to interview, and he was probably a little emotional about it because even you don't got to be dumb to see what happened. You know, you had three and a half quarters, and this guy, this man, came in and scored more points than you in five minutes and two overtimes. Yeah, that's nuts. Um, um, Dungy actually, he let's see, did I have that down here? No, they had twenty points when Dungy was in, and well, we ended up with forty, well, but it was because it was a walk off. Over the over the past three games, he's fifty four and a half percent on his throws. Okay, he's got six hundred and seventy yards, and he's only got one touchdown and three interceptions, and you know. That, you know, DeVito has played all of five minutes and seven seconds in two overtimes. And he went 11 for 19 for 181 yards and three touchdowns and an interception. So, you know, he threw three touchdowns and interception. Dungy's thrown three, um, or excuse me, yeah, three touchdowns or one touchdown and three interceptions. So, just, (laughs) I mean. Right. You and know, I mean to play to play devil's advocate. Um, I mean North Carolina, they didn't game plan for Devito. They game plan for Dungy, and it's different different quarterback, um, different you know uh, bread and butter as far as skill sets goes. Um, but I mean that's probably had a little bit something to do with it too. I mean you saw there was that one. I mean that one that interception he got baited. I mean that was a. Uh, that was a good scheme, a good little play, and he got baited, and he threw that interception. And that's stuff that he's going to learn as a redshirt freshman. But um, for three and a half quarters, they played against Eric Dungy, who they game planned for. And then DeVito came in with most likely you know, a tired defense, and he came in, and he brings a completely different dynamic. So um, to play devil's advocate, that's kind of how football works. You know, Going into the week, you game plan against guys, and if you don't look at – if you don't have film to look at and if you don't game plan and kind of break down a person and his strengths and stuff, then sometimes things like this can happen. Um, so, I mean, you know, you want to see a bigger, you want to you know, kind of a bigger uh, litmus test as far as um, DeVito goes. Uh, see him start, you know, see a team actually game plan for him for a whole game. And you really then you'll really kind of see what kind of um, – you know what kind of player he is, but no doubt about it, he came in. And he definitely has a stronger arm, and he definitely gives the receivers a better chance to catch the I, ball. I think so, he's more. I think he's more accurate. It comes down he's to this. Definitely more accurate. I was just. I mean, he was throwing eighty percent at ten yards a clip. It, uh, I mean, you can't. <laughs> what are you getting? Well, uh, there's a there's a couple things. It comes down to this. Okay, first of all, I mean, if you look around, and I think it was Brent X that that that. Um, wrote this in one of his columns. I think it was um, his uh, recap or whatever. When he was, he had brought up the point that it's not abnormal for these teams. Look at Alabama, who's uh, Clemson, who's taken out their their quarterback and put in young young blood. Uh, Alabama's done it. I mean, and it's kind of one of those things. It, it happens. You get the young blood in there, and you know, I mean, <laughs> dude, if the, you, have, you have to play talent. You can't just play guys because they've been there longer. You right. know, I, I right. mean, right. It, that's just that's just what it is. <laughs> I mean, that's a. Uh, um, you know, it's it's just as simple as that. You play the best players. Doesn't matter the age. 
Right, absolutely. So that was um, Syracuse's. Uh, now they are ten and eight all time in overtime. They haven't done back to back overtime games since 2011. Uh, I put together a, a, just a couple little notable things from Dino's press conference. After we made uh, the change at quarterback, I just cannot tell you uh, how proud I am of uh, Eric Dungy and the way he handled himself on the field. Uh, he was very supportive, okay? By no means am I saying that it's not a permanent change. It was we needed a little spark and, uh, you know, obviously the other guy came in and did some things well. You know, we still had an interception, which was really from a, a lack of youth. He got baited by very advanced coverage, and he took the bait like a hungry bass. But there was other things, obviously, that he did uh, extremely well. And there was things that Eric did well, did extremely well uh, also. Can you just walk us through your thought process with deciding to go to Tommy and, and deciding at that point, you know, why'd you do it then? I just thought that it might be a spark. You know, the one thing about quarterbacks is that uh, Dungy is a warrior. We're going to – Dungy is a warrior. You guys, you don't put your warriors – you don't leave your warriors at home when you go to war. <laughs> and I'm not going to compare football to war because my dad told me never to do that. So, <clears throat> two things. Need a spark? Absolutely. Not permanent? Hmm. I, I, that's that's um, that's debatable. You still have got two quarterbacks, okay? Now Dino yeah. isn't going to give it up over the next week, and no, he, oh god, no. Right? I mean, you just wouldn't do that for strategic purposes, anyway. Well, so, yeah, exactly. He's not gonna. Yeah, he's gonna force them to game plan for both game quarterbacks plan for both of them, and yeah, exactly. That's just that's how it's gonna go. That's the smartest way to do it. Right. So, uh, um, your opinion. Well, what do you think? Would you let's let's hear what you think? You start to veto. Well, I I would start to veto. I think it's time to just see what happens. I'd start them. If something goes wrong, you still ha- you have the two quarterbacks. Right. Is it, that's the main thing to me. You 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 have the two quarterbacks. So why not? Why wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, I understand that there's still going to be the people that talk about the two quarterback system as well because it definitely both bring, you know, different things into the I mean, go back to when Florida back in the day when they won a couple uh national championships with Tim Tebow when Tim Tebow was uh, you know, oh, freshman was, sophomore, yeah. he was the guy that was coming in and doing the little, you know, uh the run pass option, you know, the the, the fake, you know, is he gonna give it to the running back here, is he gonna run it? And he was strictly I mean, teams knew that when he was in there they were gonna run, but it was so successful that they couldn't be stopped. But then they also had Chris Leak as the quarterback that was the throwing quarterback. And, you know, so they had a two quarterback system and it worked. Um, And that can be kind of something that this kind of reminds me of if they want to go that route. But again, like you said, um, I think you kind of have to go by, uh, I mean, if, if you're smart, I feel like I look at Dino Babers as he's a smart guy. And he has to look at, you know, he's he he listens to what the fans say and he knows that Tommy's his guy. He recruited him the future, but he also respects and appreciates the things that Eric Dungy has done and how he's helped him kind of change the program and keep people, you know, in line and, you know, be a captain for the team Um, while this transition has been going on. So he feels kind of indebted to him as well. So it's one of those things where it's very difficult for him as a coach. But when you look at it. I mean, you saw the team, you saw the fans, and you can't let your emotions, you know, make that decision that's going to mess with that. Because I'm telling you right now, especially next week with NC State and at seven o'clock ESPN two. Now that we actually got a primetime game, five and one versus five and two, like to you don't want to see you don't exactly, and you don't want to see the response. I mean, I'm fr- I'm afraid that. If they run Eric Dungy out there in the first like play of our offensive first possession of our offensive, you know, uh, that they're gonna boo if Eric Dungy runs out there. Oh yeah, yeah. If fans do that, then that's that's not that's 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 not Dude, classy that's, at all. That's the type of thing that I'm afraid of is the fact yeah. that uh, I understand wrote, that Tavito won over the fans. And for all intents and purposes, if Babers sees it in the locker room or on the practice field, that these players are more comfortable and more confident being led by Tommy DeVito, then that's the route he's got to go. And like you said, oh, absolutely. 
And then, like you said, if if he's messing it up, then bring in Dungey. And then Dungey will he'll be motivated. Yeah, he'll still be there. I, I don't see the big deal about starting well, DeVito. I, I really be, don't. It'll be, and it'll be extra motivation. It'll be extra and, motivation, and I'll tell you what. Well, we got, we've got to let's, – let's just do this. Let's do this. It's time to hear from you. The loud mouths from the loud house. The best damn college sports fans in the nation. All right, at Cuse Militia on Facebook and Twitter. Go there. I always propose the question at the end of the game. What did you think of the game? And I also put out a poll. I try to do a poll every week, uh, usually after the game as well, or the next day or shortly thereafter, maybe two days, maybe three days after, whatever. Um, so this is it. This is the poll. This is proposed to all the fans. Okay, Coach, who are you putting in next week? In the Dome against NC State. The three um, options I put out there, it's obviously Tommy time. Dungy is our guy. Our two-quarterback scheme playbook. Uh, Two quarterbacks was the winner uh, with 38% of 173 votes. And that's what I picked. I, I, I just picked that as like put in DeVito. You know, you've got a guy that can pass the ball all over the field, and you can do things with Dungy in the red zone. That's where Dungy is the best. Let's be yeah. honest. Let's be honest, right? I mean, oh. Dungy oh, yeah. is the best in the red zone. And you you put together something like that, maybe something new, maybe use the old tricks. I don't know. But you put together something like that, I think fans would be happy with that. You get the best of both worlds in that case. Um, yeah. It's obviously Tommy time came in at second with 35% and, and still 27% of people that took the poll, uh, Dungy is our guy. So, and I can respect that. I've yeah. just, I've just, I've been sold. Uh, I've been sold. When you watch something that we watched against UNC, I'm sold, man. The, the, the team attitude changed. And we had this with, this is, this used to be Dungy. Remember how the team used to play with Dungy yeah. in and win them out? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So the team attitude well, changed. Yeah. Well, I mean, what do you think? That poll makes sense because you still got you're still gonna have the crazy diehard Dungy apologists who, you know, it's a senior year and you know, let's just let's keep him starting. And then you got the people that have been calling for DeVito even before this game. And <laughs> then there's probably the people in the middle who were more like me and you who, like you said, we kind of got convinced a little bit. And I didn't get convinced as far as I was seeing it though. I was seeing it though. Look, look, I I saw it, and again, I think a lot of it goes to, like I said, the defense preparing. And uh, I mean, let a defense, let it, let it, let some coaches get a full tape of Devito and let them game plan for him for a whole game, and we'll see what happens. But I'll tell you what, what? I, I didn't get convinced for like what what Baber said, and that's probably why he said it too, because he has to look at the tape. He's he said it's not a permanent, but. I mean, it's one of those things that wants me coming back for more. I, I mean, I want to see more. You know, it's not – I'm not sold that this is 100% the guy for the rest of the year and that Dungy can't come in and, and be the guy to make us the best team by the end of the year. But I definitely want to see more DeVito. I definitely want to see more DeVito too. And look, there's also a number you can call after the games. Okay, we just started this. We're t- kind of testing the waters here. Uh, the number is 315 236 Two four three six. Okay. If you didn't call the number, well, see, people call the number and they hang up, and I don't yeah. understand the hang up, but uh, that's what they. Yeah, it's d- not a trick. It, it, There's no message there. There's no secret message for us. Yeah, I mean, it, it's for you to ask a question. Yeah, it's for you. You call the number. You hear the voicemail, and after the beep, you do this. Well, What's up, Cuse Militia Podcast? This is Giovanni Heater coming to you. I'm uh, in Cicero, New York, and uh, I just watched that game Twitter handle Geo Heater. I'm on the show a lot, but wow, I don't. I'm I'm basically speechless, and I wow, I I love- uh, He goes on for like a minute, so he's not basically speechless. But here we go. Dungy for the last three years, but. Man, Tommy DeVito is the future. He comes out cold off the bench and throws a, like a 50-yard pass on, the, on his first snap. And 
beautifully put right in the bread basket. I mean, that game, you can't even make this stuff up. Tommy DeVito is legit, and he he can't. I I don't even know what to say. I'm 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 proud. I'm happy. Let's go, Cuse, baby. I mean. It was, it was a little bit of an ugly game, not going to lie, but, man, we can't dwell because that's a win. We're 5-2, and two, and we've got more wins than we have the last two seasons, and the future is bright, and guess what? we got number 16-ranked NC State coming to the Dome next weekend. Tommy DeVito's about to show him what's up. I think he's going to be the brand-new starting quarterback. But, uh, yeah, I don't want to take up too much time here, but Sean and Joe, you guys are doing a great job. Thanks for this. Let's go orange, baby. Woo! <laughs> There we go. <laughs> he threw in a woo at about. the end. That's what I'm talking there about. If you think you can top Giovanni, our boy Giovanni from Cicero, right? Cicero? Yes. Yeah, from Cicero. North Syracuse, yeah. 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 Uh, so if you can top our boy Giovanni, I dare you to call. If you can yeah. top that. They, he yeah. only called once and left a message. There's no redoing your message. They, he just he flowed. And so he did. Off, he man. did. I mean, you can just <laughs> hey, you can call. You can ask. You can ask a question, and we'll make sure that we answer it on the podcast. Or you can call like Geo did and just leave whatever emotional comment that you you want. Absolutely. I mean, it was that yeah. was awesome. It was right. awesome. It's right after the game when yeah. he le- when he left that, and that's what we want. Just emotional responses from fans from yes, right after great games like that. So yeah, that's that was awesome. I mean, a doubt. do you really want me reading and butchering your written comments? You know, like <laughs> can't even read. I know. I can barely. <laughs> I'm, I can barely read, and I normally I try to read them first so I can try to put my own punctuation in because you guys failed to use punctuation, but. The voicemail thing, that's easy. I just throw it up there. So, uh, Giovanni, thanks, dude. He yep. He's great. And, um, oh, yeah. Always comment. Always got something. Yeah. yeah. And he's DM'd me. He calls his football and basketball games for CNS. He does play. Oh, nice. He does play by play. So, um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. He wants to get on. He has to be on. So, hey, I mean, we might be able to make room. We'll see. So, um, anyway, I've already got with him on that. So he knows what's up. So, um, uh, on Twitter after the game, uh, at JD's dad three, he said lucky. And I don't usually respond to people, but I was like, I don't know, man. I responded. I said, I don't know. DeVito played less than a quarter of a, <laughs> what was it? Like a, a third of a quarter and he threw for yeah. three touchdowns. So, um, you know. I don't think it was luck. I don't think it was luck. They they went out and they 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 won the game. Um, well, sometimes you need a little bit of luck. So sometimes whatever. you need a little bit of luck. Luck w's would be w. a luck would be a bad snap and you'd fallen on the fumble. You know, something like that maybe. I don't see as actually playing the game as being good luck. But anyway, yeah. uh, at the big E underscore two twenty eight, a win is a win. If you're not in the playoff hunt, style points don't matter. Having said that, start Devito. All right. Uh, at J Carpenter seventy four shouldn't have been that close. Been a big fan of Eric his whole career, but something seems off. Uh, glad Devito seems to have ice in his veins. Excited to hear what you guys have to say in the next podcast this week. Uh, so Jake, yeah, I mean I agree with Jake. Something's off. We touched on yeah. that. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. At Oil Cuse, our buddy Captain Patrick. He said, "I love God, my family, and Tommy Devito." Go Cuse. Oh, shit. <laughs> he does not care. Um, at Spud Mall 5, our boy, Michael. It appears to be time to make a change under center. Hashtag play DeVito. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the trend a little bit. At Soup Can 11. Love that. A win is a win, but they were lucky to get that one. Yeah, you know, again with the luck. Okay, okay, I gotcha. At Jay Sweenberg. Uh, Dungy Blows. Um, <laughs> all right. Oh, Joe, does Dungy blow? I don't think he blows, but no, I don't think he blows. No, no. absolutely not. So, <laughs> uh, and as long as that other guy's cool to say that Pittsburgh or Clemson were lucky to win too, then that's fine. Captain Patrick, he couldn't get enough. He chimed back in. He said, "And have fun imagining uh, Tommy De- Devito throwing bombs to all those young, fast ri- wide receivers we have waiting in the stables. Don't forget about T. Jackson either in the next couple of years." Uh, mm-hmm. uh, let's see at. Steve, Stevie, what the heck is this? Steve's, <laughs> Steve, these are hard to read. At Steve's Why Wonder. 
Uh, DeVito deserved to start three games ago. If he isn't the starter next week, he should transfer. We don't deserve to keep him. <laughs> and Whoa. Ew, yeah. So Jay replied to that. I'm just going with first names now. I tried to give the handles out so y'all can follow him. At J Evans B C B N J. Transfer. He could sit out next season while he so he can sit out next season while Dungey graduates. He's not transferring. He should start next week and will be the starter next season. Uh, yeah. Our buddy that's Zach, true. If he if he transferred, he have to set out another year, and he just sat out a year, and he yeah. knows the team's going to be his next year. So that's one of the dumbest comments I've ever heard. So. Yeah, he wouldn't he wouldn't do that. Um, th- he's probably not thinking about having to sit out next year if he transfers. Zach on Facebook, I got one. What the hell just happened? And he just basically slams his face on his keyboard, it looks like. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, uh, our boy Mike DeVito, explanation point for a mile. Uh, enough said. I've been calling it all year. So I had to give Mike his props because um, he did. Mike was calling it, and Brandon was calling it too. He said, yeah, I agree yeah. 100%. It's truly time to bench and replace. Like I said, though, I don't do the bench thing. I don't think that's the route. Right. Uh, you you have you, you got to get the the two quarterback scheme going, and we talked about this, Joe, and you said it might be too late in the season for that. But I think if you just take the good from Dungy and you keep what Devito knows, it'd be easy, right? You're not devising a whole playbook in that case, right? Right, right, yeah. Uh, Paul says we won. That's all that matters. Was it pretty? No. And did it ha- and it didn't have to be as long as we get the W. Exactly. Uh, James says QB controversy in the Qs. Absolutely. Kevin. Kevin's got his trademark Qs with the orange. He's on there every week doing that. Uh, Michael, we came together in in the end, and it came out and came out with a W. That says it all. Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, but, it that so was when does I mean when does it I, I just <sighs> what. Sometimes I just get frustrated because, like, since when? Who? Huh? Huh? Since when does anybody <laughs> care how you won a game? Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't think anybody on there really cares, right? Well, the whole you know, lucky or oh, should have done the, this or uh, this is or then it's just like. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, okay. Good point. So you're saying as a Q's fan, why would you come out and be like, "Oh, they got lucky"? That's what you say when when your buddy's team beats yours. Yeah. Right? Isn't that your argument? Right. Oh, they got lucky, yeah. dude. Get the hell yeah. out of here. You ain't trying to Bottom hear. Bottom line is, is who cares? It's like you're not trying to hear that. If you're a true, if you're a true Syracuse fan, you're not going to come out and be like, "Oh, we were lucky." I mean, you're not going to say. It. You're just going to be happy that you won the game. Right. Exactly. So, um, all right, time to give some stuff away. I'm going to do this this episode. I think I might do it next episode too. So, if you go to iTunes, please go to iTunes. Leave us a five star review and uh, or five star rating in a re- in a written review. If I read it on the show, then you email uh, Cuse Militia at gmail dot com and we'll send out the Cuse crate. Man, the Cuse crate comes in an envelope actually. So, <laughs> it's just, yeah. so it's, where to so, get its name from? Uh, I don't know. Uh, so um, this is from uh, Weird Al Spankalicious. Uh, badasses. Sean and Joe should quit their di- their day jobs. My favorite podcast. So Weird Al, Spankalicious, appreciate that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, if I hit this Mega Millions, I may do this every morning, and I'll That's pay. True. I'll pay for Joe too, too, as well. Aww. Yeah, yeah. I got you, Joe. If Thanks, I get those man. Mega Millions, we're sitting behind these microphones every morning, every day. We'll pump out an episode. What do you think? Hey, dude, I'm a cheap date, so <laughs> that's. Uh... Don't tell me that. Um, all right. <laughs> That's it. Joe, final thoughts. You got anything? Final thoughts is, uh, again, I want to see more Tommy DeVito. I mean, we'll get into it a little bit wow. more come Tuesday. Um, we'll know a little bit more about uh, you know, injuries where both teams are sitting on injuries and um, be able to listen to – you know, the pregame press conferences of both teams and stuff like that and kind of see where both teams I Again, we're not going to know who's going to be starting. Um, but after this past week, I see it being very difficult for him to not start. Um, not start DeVito, but I wouldn't be surprised at doing a little two-quarterback thing. Again, like you said, who knows? Switch it up. Usually DeVito, usually Dungey's hurt by this time. 
<laughs> and someone else is in here anyway. So, hey, switch it up. DeVito's kind of playing. He's doing good. Yeah, he's, see what happens, you know? Yeah, switch it up, man. Day, I mean, that's that's what the fans want to see, and it looked like that's what <clears throat> the, the team, wanted, team to wanted to see, sadly. And you know what? Let him go out there and make his bed. And if Dungy's got to come in and save the day like DeVito has a couple times this year, then Absolutely. so be it. I yeah. mean, that's why it's a team game. That's why there's more than one quarterback on the roster, you know? Yeah. Uh, you just got to get over egos and hope that the – the whole uh, the family, La Familia, you know, everything, you know, I'm sure that I mean, Dungy, he's like, again, he's a warrior. So even if DeVito comes in and he is the quarterback, I wouldn't be surprised if there isn't a way that uh, Babers gets him on the on the field to, uh, you know, to have him part of it because Dungy can still help. Yeah, absolutely. So we will be back. We're going to try to record the the NC State uh, preview on Tuesday. Again, they come into the Dome. It's going to be a primetime game on ESPN2. The AP poll came out today, and they are ranked 22. Uh, they went from 16 yeah, so to 22 after getting, yeah, after getting freaking shredded to ribbons by Clemson. So um, they're going to want to win. They're going to be tough. They That was their first loss, and we'll go mm-hmm. over all of that on Tuesday. So Thanks to thanks to Giovanni. Thanks thanks to everybody else who participated in fan feedback. Um, thanks to James on guitar. Thanks to my bookie. Thanks to Armchair All Americans. No, and, everybody. It's yeah, Twitter, Twitter. Your tweet, and you guys your are tweet. awesome, man. Last time I checked, that uh, truck. Oh, the tweet. hashtag trucking. <laughs> yeah, it uh, had three hundred and sixty-five thousand views. That's insane. So that's you insane. jumped on that before ESPN and Barstool and all of them. So heads up to you, buddy. That's kudos to yeah, you. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, it took I was freaking out because it took like two minutes to load. I went outside. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, whatever what you did, it worked. On? You were still way ahead of everybody else. Yeah, so uh, that was that was awesome to watch yesterday and um yeah. stuff like that doesn't happen to to us every day. So it was cool. We <laughs> yeah, appreciate all cool. that, retweets and all that. So all right, man. That's it. Thanks everybody again for Joe. I'm Sean. We're out. Peace. This has been the Q's Militia Podcast with Sean and Joe. Be heard. Contact us on Facebook at Q's Militia Podcast and tweet at us using hashtag Q's Militia.